of today, weekend on CKNW News Talk 980. Once again, here's Sean Leslie. All right, welcome back. President Barack Obama this week in an interview said he is not convinced that pot is more dangerous than alcohol, and he says it's important to allow recent legalization efforts in Colorado and Washington State to proceed. Here's a quote uh, from the president. He says, as has been well documented, I smoke pot as a kid. I view it as a bad habit and a vice, not very different from the cigarettes that I smoked as a young person up through a big chunk of my adult life. I don't think it is more dangerous than alcohol. The president even argued marijuana is less dangerous in terms of its impact on the individual consumer still he says it's not something i encourage i've told my daughters i think it's a bad idea waste of time not very healthy still this is the president of the united states saying pot is no more dangerous and possibly even less dangerous than alcohol but do his actions match up with his words. Jody Emery joins me now. Jody, public speaker, political activist, wife of Mark Emery, owner of Cannabis Culture Headquarters Store, Cannabis Culture Magazine, Pot TV, and BCMP Lounge. Hi, Jody. How are you today? Well, I'm doing very well. How about yourself? I'm good. Thanks for coming on. always appreciate your time. How much of a, a significance did you attach to what the president had to say this week? I think it's enormously significant because not only do we have two states with legal marijuana, but there are more and more coming on board with ballot initiatives and just simple legislation being introduced to do the same. And the U.S. federal government just announced, Eric Holder said, they're going to allow banks to deal with money from states selling legal marijuana. And really? that is enormous, too. So what we're seeing, even with Obama saying that marijuana is no more dangerous than alcohol, well, marijuana is still Schedule 1 throughout the United States in federal law, but alcohol certainly isn't. So that creates a big difference between law and reality, and Obama is acknowledging that. I think it's fantastic. I don't think we would have seen this even a few years ago. I mean, this is the first president who openly admits to smoking pot. I mean, we all know Bill Clinton smoked. He says he didn't inhale, but it just, Jody, to me, it shows how times have changed from even a few years ago that you have a president of the United States getting up there saying something like this. And uh, even the right wing didn't appear to uh, really lose its mind over this. No, because they realize public opinion is on the side of legalization, not just through lefty liberals, but people who are conservative. This isn't about saying people should smoke pot, as Obama said. He tells his daughters not to. But we are talking about a substance that is widely used, that clearly doesn't cause harm nowhere, anywhere near the scale of alcohol, and everybody knows it. But what I find kind of funny is that, you know, Canada was leading the way when Mark was here, and then he got sent down there, and now they're legalizing it, and Canada is going backwards, so I just can't wait for Mark to come home so we can do the same back at home. <laughs> He's, of course, selling, uh, serving time for, for selling seeds, uh, marijuana seeds online, that uh, evil, evil man, Jody. When's he coming back to Canada? Well, July 9th is when the U.S. releases him, but it's pretty significant to note that Mark sent money to Colorado to make it legal medically there, allowing them to grow, and he sent millions of seeds, and a lot of activists there, including the people behind the legalization campaign, were mentored by him and inspired by him, and the same goes for Washington State, where his prosecutor change sides, help legalize it there with our help, too. So Mark has had a huge impact on the United States, including giving money to organizations like Marijuana Policy Project, which are multi-million dollar organizations now working to implement all of these laws, doing huge work. So Mark did his time, and he put in the money where his mouth was and was down there to see it unfold. But again, he has to come home, and we have to deal with Harper and the Conservatives, because while the federal government of the United States is talking about marijuana legalization, Harper here is getting rid of medical gardens. They're introducing and passing mandatory minimums. Things are really tough in Canada, so we could learn a lesson from the United States, which is, again, nothing we would have said a few years ago. <laughs> Stephen Harper is not a pot smoker. Jody, you can just look at him, I think, and see that, but also he is said. <laughs> so this is not something on his agenda, but it is definitely on uh, on Justin Trudeau's agenda. Uh, Tom Mulcair and the NDP, I think, have spoken about decriminalization as opposed to outright uh, legalization. But as, as we've said, Stephen Harper doesn't want to go there, and uh, he may very well win the next uh, next federal election, uh, uh, Jody. So I don't know. I get the feeling we may be years. We may be, may be falling years behind the U.S. on this issue. 
I think we are, and I think Canada does want a change, and we know public opinion is on our side, so we need to legalize it here, and the Liberals do endorse that based on scientific facts the same way the United States is. But something else Obama noted was that he admits the drug laws and marijuana laws are used more against poor people yes. and minorities yes. than others. And we're seeing that in Canada, too. And a lot of our drug law enforcement is against the poor and the minorities, and that's something that's happening more and more often here. So again, we need to learn from the United States. They're admitting this is a failed policy, but Harper and the Conservatives are passing laws that we all know, and judges even admit, are designed to punish the poorest amongst our society. And what kind of Christian man would be doing that if Harper is supposed to care? It's really unfortunate and scary, but again, Mark's going to come home, and he has served his time in prison, so we can speak from experience about the harm that these laws do to people who are harmless to others. You know, uh, you're right about the uh, the discriminatory aspect of it. I think it's, I don't have the figure in front of me, but if you're uh, black or, or Latino in the United States, you are far more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than if you are white, Jody, for the same drug. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And the communities are kept down and in the sub subhuman conditions because of these laws. And again, the president of the United States is admitting that that is the case. And as a man of black background, he can speak to this, that people are unjustly persecuted. And he knows he himself never suffered the consequences because he lived a more privileged life. But he can't say that he gets special treatment while others... That's right. He was lucky. He got lucky. But Because you're right, if he'd been born into a, a different household or in a different neighborhood or something like that, different socio-economic uh, uh, strata, he may very well, because he was you know, a member of the Choom Gang, he was known as a big pothead, he may very well have gone to jail and never become president, Jody. Exactly. And we know that the hypocrisy runs rampant. So, again, with Obama saying this is pretty huge that he's admitting they need to deal with states that want to sell marijuana. And again, Canada, very backwards. I need to stress upon parents out there who don't want their kids smoking pot, but they have to realize that right now the laws that are being introduced subject their children to even worse punishment and worse harm than pot could ever do. So we have to organize in Canada because this isn't something that the stoners on the street are scared about. This is something communities need to be worried about, particularly with asset forfeiture. A lot of families in British Columbia are losing their houses just because they grew a couple of plants and the police claim that they sold it. And you don't even need to be charged with a crime to have the police be able to seize your home. There are some very scary things happening that people aren't aware of. Again, Canada was progressive. It's hard to believe how far backwards we've become, but Harper's had a lot of things uh, turned around on us all, so it's easy to get lost in how much crisis is happening. But mm -hmm. I just want to remind people, even if they don't smoke pot and even if they don't like it, they're paying through taxes and through the loss of civil liberties when we increase the punishment against peaceful, nonviolent pot people. Uh, 604-280-9898, do you agree with the president that marijuana is uh, uh, not uh, as harmful as alcohol? Uh, 604-280-9898, star 9898 on your cell phone, long distance, toll free, one 877 399-9898. You can comment on Twitter. Just to use the at CKNW uh, handle or myself, Sean Leslie 980 And on Twitter, uh, Jody, uh, somebody just identifying themselves as Jay, says, uh, wrong, marijuana is nine times more carcinogenic than cigarettes and can bring on schizophrenia, bipolar, and other mental health issues. I know you've talked about this before, but those uh, are those not legitimate health concerns? Well, first I'll say that even if they are legitimate concerns, that doesn't mean we should arrest people and spend tax dollars putting people in prison and ruining lives over it because we know that pharmaceutical drugs, alcohol, tobacco, even sports injuries with our kids playing football causing concussions, we get brain damage happening all the time, guys. I mean, you don't put people in prison because of potential harm. You educate about responsible, safe use, and you make it as safe as possible. Otherwise, everything we do has to be illegal, and we all got to live in boxes. And secondly, all of these claims about schizophrenia, there is a difference between causation and correlation. We know that these claims that it causes schizophrenia are untrue. What these studies say is that people who have incidents of schizophrenic behavior may have used pop before and it may have brought it on, but we also have proof that alcohol 
causes brain damage and personality issues and exactly. schizophrenic behavior, and yet it's legal. And we have pharmaceuticals advertised on television that admit you're going to do crazy things in the middle of the night when you aren't even awake and you might hurt other people or kill yourself. We have pharmaceutical yep. drugs sold on television that say, oh, this may make you kill yourself. May make you have but suicidal or homicidal thoughts, yes. Exactly. So when we're talking about harm to society and how we need to deal with that, making something illegal and putting people in prison for it and spending billions of tax dollars on that instead of health care and education, well, that's just insanity. Jody Emery is my guest. we got calls on the line. I must take a break. 604-280-9898. We'll be right back here on CKNW News Talk 980. This is the World Today Weekend on CKNW News Talk 980. Once again, here's Sean Leslie. There we go. A little clash action. Perfect for a Sunday. All right, welcome back. Uh, if you've ever had trouble in family court, family law, stick around after the 3 o'clock news. We've got a great guest. We'll talk about uh, some of the issues facing people, particularly if you can't afford a lawyer. Right now, the topic is marijuana and uh, the, uh, the the sweeping changes south of the border where we have Washington and Colorado legalizing recreational marijuana. The president this week saying marijuana is not more harmful than alcohol and saying these legalization efforts are important. The president of the United States saying this. 604-280-9898. Let's go to the phone lines. Ben in Surrey. Ben, hi. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Oh, not too bad. No, I'd like to make a comment. As for the United States, their penalty is severe. That's first. Second thing, once they legalize it in Canada, 32 million people would be doing it, number two. Number three, Obama can afford to say it because he knows their penalty is very severe, period. Well, I'm not sure about your last point, but uh, Jody Emery, if we did legalize it, do you think 32 million Canadians would suddenly become potheads? Well, would the callers? suddenly go try it. If you it still there, legal? Ben? <laughs> no, I, I'd, I'd be growing it. You'd be doing yeah, it if it was legal? Are, are, you, are you doing pharmaceutical pills and are you drinking alcohol and doing cigarettes and everything else that's legal? I mean, it should be about freedom of choice. And first of all, we have millions of Canadians using marijuana regularly throughout all of our history, and we don't have any evidence of harm on society from that use. At the most, People may be accused of being lazy, yeah. but I can tell you there's a lot of lazy people out there who don't smoke pot, so it's not causing them to be lazy. And if it is, well, then that's their problem, and maybe they should do something about it. But the majority of users of marijuana in Canada are responsible users who have no problems at all, and there's no reason they should face criminal penalties, losing their job, losing their right to travel, and losing a lot of money defending themselves against the law that causes more harm than the substance itself, as declared by the Senate of Canada in 2002. Edgar Eduardo on Twitter says Obama's right. Finally, he has the balls to admit this while still serving his term. Mike Benter on Twitter says, can you ask where kids under 19 will be able to buy legal pot if legalized? And I uh, I take it that is a, a, a meant to be a provocative question because, Jody, I, you know, if we ever do go the road of legalization here in Canada, it's not going to be legal for kids under 19. It would be treated, yeah. I would think, as, as booze no, and smokes. Exactly. Nobody's talking about legalizing pot for kids. But when we look at alcohol, sure, kids use it. But what do we do? We try and educate them about the consequences. We try and keep it out of their hands. And everybody knows that kids get much easier access to marijuana and illegal substances than they do to legal substances. Drug dealers don't ask for ID. And teenagers basically just sell to each other. There aren't really creepy drug dealers hanging around schoolyards. It's people just buying it and selling it to make a little money and get a little stone. So you're talking about... Like young people, we have to educate them about responsible use of any substance, and that's something we need to do instead of threatening them with criminal penalties. 604 280 9898, star 9898 on your cell phone, Bill in Surrey. Bill, hi. How are you doing, John? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. I'd just like to say that I don't think Mark and uh, Jody are pot activists. I would say they're entrepreneurs, they're in it for the money, and that's the only reason they're, they're trying to advance their business. And as a pot activist, I don't what know. Weren't, weren't you arrested for selling seeds? 
Well, yes, but Mark was shown to have given all of the money away and only had $11 in his bank account and no savings and no money. The DEA and the federal government of the United States tried to find any money, and they said he was the only person ever that they've ever found who had absolutely nothing, and they tracked all of the money, and we have the documents from the federal government showing they traced all of the money and showed it went to political organizations, political campaigns, activists throughout the United States, and Mark Emery had nothing left in the end to show for it, and that was the purpose. All of the how, media. How, 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 how do you two earn a living? I run a store downtown that sells hemp clothing and magazines and books, and we yeah. run a website called Cannabis Culture, which is news and political activism, and we sell banner ads. I struggle to pay my bills and pay my taxes like any small business owner in Vancouver. I think he's asking if you sell pot, if you're going to make a lot oh, of money, oh, Jody, no. if, if we legalize no. pot. No, Mark stopped selling seeds in 2005, almost a decade ago. And since then, there is absolutely nothing but a whole lot of debt. And he paid his taxes on that income, too. Government of Canada got over 500000 Mark is going to come home with not a penny to his name. We're going to have to work hard just selling stuff at our store and going on speaking tours, and he's going to write a book. But we're not in it for the money, and everybody knows that. If we were in it for the money, trust me, I'd be off in Bermuda or somewhere. But clearly, we're not. Clearly, Mark has nothing, and that's been well documented, not only by the media over decades and decades, including CNN, Rolling Stone, National Geographic, I mean, Wall Street Journal. Everybody proves that there's no money to be made, and I don't sell seeds. I don't sell pot. We don't sell anything through a dispensary. I have nothing to do with marijuana itself. I am a political activist who runs a store that educates people and helps them get access to any of the products they need related to hemp and cannabis information. Welcome to come down. <laughs> 604-280-9898. Brad and Courtney is on the line. Hi, Brad. Go ahead, sir. Hello. Hi, Hi. Jody. Um, it's wonderful to talk to you, and I'd like just to su suggest to the listeners that from my point of view, Jody, you're right on the mark, and you're knowledgeable, you're articulate, and I don't believe anybody could argue with you in a sit-down because you've got your facts straight, and uh, it's wonderful to listen to you. And on the second note, I have voted conservative for the last five elections, and I'm, I like his economic policies, and I'm sure many would disagree with me on some things about Harper, but this next election, I don't know if I can bring myself to vote. You're going to vote Justin? You're going to vote Justin Trudeau, Brad? Well, that's the problem. There's a big problem there. But I, I'm really angry, and I'm an activist in the sense that I don't touch marijuana, I don't like it, but my tax dollars being spent chasing and prosecuting and incarcerating marijuana is just insanity. And uh, anyways, keep up the good work, Joey. Well, thank you so much. And I honestly, if you can find any police officers or politicians or prohibitionists who would have a debate with me. I've been looking for one for years, so send them my way if you can. <laughs> yeah, interesting that uh, it, it's very true that there have been a lot of police officers that have come out the other way, Jody, and we've seen certainly that group leap, uh, law enforcement uh, against uh, prohibition, where you, you have the voices of police officers and lawyers, including the prosecutor who uh, put Mark away, now saying, you know, this whole thing is insane. Absolutely. And again, it's about the waste of tax dollars. So you can hate pot, you can hate hippies, you can feel whatever you want about it. But do you really want to spend millions of dollars on police budgets and prisons and court time? I mean, do Canadians know that 75% of all federal court time is dealing with drug cases? Can you believe that? Can you imagine the hospitals we could have, the health care we would have for our aging population, the schools, the education? We could be tops in the world in innovation and so much, but it's being squandered. And not only money that we're making that's being spent, this is debt. This is all of our little babies in kindergarten are going to be paying for people being sent to prison for pot. That should disgust a lot of people, conservative, liberal, whatever. It's not even about pot. It's about the waste of our very, very precious, limited tax dollars. That should offend people. On Twitter, Henry says, no-brainer, pot is much less dangerous than alcohol. I think the death stats uh, bear that out. I don't know of a single recorded death in history solely from consuming marijuana. 604-280-9898. Colin in Vancouver on the open lines. Colin, hi. Yeah, there is no uh, person that ever died off pot. <clears throat> I smoked it for 30 years. I don't smoke it anymore, but it didn't cause any brain damage. And, uh, yeah, we just got to move on with life. Yeah, I agree. I think Jody does too. Colin, thanks for that. Let's go to Andy in Abbotsford. Andy, hi, what do you think? 
Hey, uh, I just want to put it out there that um, a lot of people don't know that when this stuff, uh, well, actually, before it got illegalized, uh, mar- not marijuana, hemp, outdoor grown hemp used to be the the main export of uh, America and Canada. It was a main grown crop. It was uh, it was grown everywhere. And um, another thing a lot of people don't know is that the very first Ford Model T actually ran on hemp fuel. <laughs> and uh, the people that uh, made it illegal, like I- I- I'm a strong believer that if the fuel companies didn't illegal, because we didn't know about pollution back then, if they didn't make the hemp illegal, then all of our cars would have actually been running on hemp-powered fuel, just like the very first Ford Model T is. Like, you can go on Google and look that up. That's true. And it is true, yeah. One of the cars that Ford made was made with a hemp fiber composite, which made it indestructible against the sledgehammer. There's a famous photo of him swinging a big hammer trying to dent this car, but it can't be dented because it's made of hemp. (laughs) Hemp is an enormous industry uh, when we allow it to be. It can make food, it can make fuel, it can make fiber, and in the United States won't allow it to be grown, so they buy a lot of it from Canada, but it could be a huge part of our new green economy throughout Canada, a new source of fuel. We don't have to eliminate all other sources, but something we should explore if we're looking to be innovative and leading a lot of progressive business in the world. Be a good example and use hemp. Let's get one more call around before we have to wrap it up. Enrico out in Mission. How are you doing, Enrico? Good today. Thanks, Sean. Um, I'm not, I'm not actually disagreeing with anything your guest is saying, and I, I thought I might, but the problem I have is I just know too many, too many potheads, just dumb, stupid, slow people just smoke pots, whatever. And I, you know what? At the end of the day, if, if, if we can all agree that when, when they just can't make it in life anymore and, and they just spent too much money on pot, that I'm not responsible for them, just like if they didn't wear a helmet. How about if they're drunks? You know any drunks? Yeah, same thing, right? I mean, all these people waste their money and time. Drinking too much. Should, do you want to pay to put them in prison? Do you want to pay money? No, to put that's what I'm. Hey, listen. You, did you hear what I said? I'm not disagreeing with you. Did you hear that part? No, I didn't. Well, I thought saying, you said you were I'm disagreeing. Saying, Pardon me. I'm just saying that we could just go a little bit further and say that if all these people, once they're deadbeats and losers because they smoke, they smoke too much pot and they waste their time, it's like it's like an entire pause button on their life when you smoke pot and drink. It's like pause. And when you finally wake out of it, I don't want to pay for it. Well, that's a, a bit of a stereotype there, Enrico. I'm sure there are some folks like that, but uh, I, I think there are many, many others who defy that stereotype. Jody, got to leave it there. I'm up against the clock. Always good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks again. <laughs> Jody Emery, we will break for the 3 o'clock news.